All right, so welcome back to Dad Bod Bikers. This is our trip and bike review. So we've had the KPX 250s for a little over a year, a year and a half. Yeah. Um, so we're going to talk about how we got to those and then about the trip and how they performed. So these were upgrades from our Tau Tau TBR 7 250. Boom, picture Which, of that. Yeah, picture of that. <laughs> Technically, they weren't 250s, but they were 230. They were two, 229 C, C, so CG 230s yep. um, engines. They five were five speed. speed. Carbureted. Yep. So you can see, let's see if I can do this. Boom. That's what that looks like on the video. There you go. That's us, ready? Yeah, boy! Yeah! All right. So we rode those. We kind of rode the hell out of them. We never really had any big issues, honestly. Um, no, I think right. we had wheel bearings. That yeah. we replaced. We're getting a little bad one time. For the money we spent, they were fourteen hundred dollars. Yeah. They were fourteen hundred dollars. They were illegal. House. Yeah, fourteen hundred shipped. That was true. Yeah, we got a deal. So both times we bought motorcycles, we bought them with a group of people. So the first time we bought three at once. Three at once, yeah. So we got them for fourteen hundred shipped. These we bought five at five, once. Yeah. Yeah. So we got these probably about two hundred dollars cheaper than we uh, should have. So like I said, the TBR seven was fourteen hundred. We probably got out around. 3150 Yeah, right? Texas, Texas tag title. Texas tag yeah. title, out the door, tagged bike, under $3,200, or around $3,200. Yeah. So I think when we were looking at it, it was like a little bit below three, but then when you added everything in, it bumped it up over three. Yeah. Which is still, for a six-speed fuel injection... That's true, so that was our upgrades. We right. went from carburation to fuel injection. Fuel injection. We went from five-speed to six-speed. Six we went from out-of-the-box top speed 50-55 to top speed 70-75. Right, uh, stiffer suspension or bigger suspension. I'm not bigger gonna say stiffer. Yeah. But I think it has bigger, bigger forks up front. Bigger forks, uh, bigger tires. Uh, I think it has an aluminum rim versus the steel rim. Correct. Isn't that one of the upgrades? Yep, 20 cc more. Yep, 20 cc more. Um, they were both disc front and rear, so that's not really an upgrade. Uh, LEDs everywhere out of the box. Uh, the headlights are nine day better. Yeah. So we have LED lights. Yeah, these are stop. Different. The, the TBR was just incandescent. It was, it was yeah. So dope. we upgraded those to yeah. LED when we had it. Um, yeah. So that was uh, the reason for upgrading to this. It, it allowed us to do stupider trips, right? Right. Like the ones that we did. So when we uh, got these, since we've had these, I'll let you you go ahead first. So yeah. So did a little different. Mine was uh, I wanted to test it out going back and forth. I have a commute from the suburbs into Atlanta or Tucker, I guess we would say. And it was 30 miles, and sitting in traffic sucks. So I was taking back roads, and it was averaging 62 miles to the gallon. And red light to red light, it was. It, I actually enjoyed my morning commute. I mean, it was crazy with everybody in Atlanta trying to kill you, but it was fun because you could rip it through the gears. So I had a blast riding back and forth from work. I mean, other than the crazies, and and you did this on the interstate sometimes. Sometimes I go on the interstate. I'm like, oh, let me see how to do. It. And uh, I will say, well, video of us on the yeah, interstate. Video, uh, <laughs> interstate's a little sketchy. Interstate's a little sketchy. It's it doesn't weigh a whole lot. That's another advantage of the bike. Is it, it it's really light. So I guess there's a disadvantage to that. Is that when you're on the interstate, you get blown around a yes, little bit more. There is zero wind protection. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have a lot of weight. It but I see. I like the no weight thing, right? Because if we drop them, we can pick them up. That's it. That's always right. been my thing. I want to be under 400 pounds for a motorcycle because that's allowed me to always be able to pick up my own bike on the trail. And the commute to work was actually fun. I kept mine bone stock. I didn't change a single thing. I, I bought it, put it together. I didn't do grips. I didn't do me. I mean, literally bone stock uh, for the first 1,500 miles. Yeah, for the first fit, oh, probably almost close to 2,000 miles, right? I mean, yeah. it was it was up there, and I, I put a bunch of miles running that, and then we did our. Uh, Oh, you had issues though. Oh, yeah. So yeah, let's see what a month, two months in after running it back and forth to work, uh, the battery went dead. Looked into that, ended up the starter had went bad. And I, I'll say that uh, Lafon, they we, we reached out to customer customer support and they shipped us a starter. They shipped us a starter. It like no nice. cost, yeah. uh, and it was quick. It wasn't like it was. Uh, we had to wait months. To, it was a, a very quick. Response time, which is insane, considering you know you think a Chinese motorcycle that it's going to take forever to parts arrive. It was we easy didn't to replace. Pay a dime. Yeah, it didn't pay a dime. It was shipped on their dime. Mm -hmm. um, so we replaced the starter, put a new battery in it, and haven't had an issue since. Uh, also, with that, when we were assembling these bikes, which uh, there's a time lapse of us yeah, assembling it. Yeah. There. there you go. Um, but when we were assembling these bikes, we put his uh, front speedometer seal, we doubled up by accident. We put a gasket and put it over the top and crushed the original one. And they sent us another one for free, even though that was our fault. 
Yeah, we, I think we ended up putting the, the double seal on someone else's bike. My right, bike double seal on somebody one. else's yeah. and Dan's had nothing, so we were afraid we were going to wear out his bearings. It was actually so leaking grease, so that yeah. was a good thing we, we caught it, but they actually, instead of just sending us that gasket, they sent this whole new Speedo cable, which was... Yeah, so we still have that sitting over on the Again, shelf. no cost, directly shipped to us, and I mean, the customer service was prompt. I mean, literally, I think you sent an email, and within a week we had the part. It was yeah. crazy, so I, I got nothing but good things to say about customer service and... Yeah, we have kind of schematics, user manuals, yeah. like a lot of things we don't have with the other Chinese motorcycles, wiring diagrams, things that I can actually get a hold of, I can look right. at a parts manual. Now, I'm, I'm sure there will come a day when I can't find a part or it's not available, but at this point at least I can tell them what part number I need. Right, which is and we big. can get yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, the riding back and forth of work was great, and then I mean we use them for, for off-roading around town, going to find little adventures, and I mean... We don't have to do anything. We just hop on them and go. Yes. Been... So I didn't do what he did. Yeah. I did probably a thousand miles in the time that he did fifteen hundred miles, but I did eighty percent of that off road. Yeah. So I would drive two, three miles to the trail and spend five miles in the woods driving around. So I was probably a little harder on mine, but at the same time I also did upgrades. So I immediately did grips, levers, because I hate the stock levers. They're very skinny. They shake around. Such a cheap part. So the grips are fourteen dollars. The levers are twenty five dollars. Um, I've always ran with my phone because of that. I always needed a USB charger, so I have a USB charger. There's a video of that install on how to do it. Uh, along with that, it allowed me to have a battery charger that I can plug in up here instead of having to take the sides off my bike to get to the battery. Dan just did a pigtail on his. Yeah, I did the uh, what, what you call it? Trickle, trickle charger, yeah, pigtail. Charger, yeah. Yep. So. I put those things in. I also did the sprocket early on. So in that interstate speeds video that we did, that was one bike with the sprocket, one without, and we switched bikes, same speed. And I mean, it, it yeah. makes a, a, I will say, because I rode without that sprocket forever. And I like it. I thought it was a little bit more torquey. It was a little bit more snappy off the gears. Um, doing this trip with the new sprocket, yeah. Definitely dropped your RPMs. I didn't find myself shifting into sixth gear unless we were going downhill or on a straightaway. And, uh, so, but it, it kept the bike at a much lower RPM. Like literally yeah. when I was driving back and forth, I was redlined, tacked out the entire, but I, I don't know, I thought it was fun. It was... Yeah, I, I could see the reason for not switching. In fact, if you aren't going to do stupid road trips like we did, don't switch your sprocket. Yeah, keep it the way it, it is. It doesn't right? give you any top speed a la the TBR7, Hot 250, those bikes right. where it actually needs it made better a, gearing. Yeah, yeah, the sprocket made a huge difference on those bikes. This bike, uh, it, it, it basically keeps you, I would say, maybe longevity of the motor, right? Because you're, you're not turning as many RPMs. Let's see, so I did, oh, mirrors. Yeah, yeah, that's just a cosmetic mirrors, thing. Yeah. Um, USB, uh, a cheap seat cover. I honestly hate getting on the seat when it's black and in the summer and it burns my butt, so I replaced that. But I think we can talk now about the trip and what that yep. entailed. So let me switch pages here so we don't miss anything. So we did a, uh, uh, we're going to call it Dan's mental health trip. <laughs> Dan wanted to leave and go somewhere. He actually wanted to go to Maine originally, which yeah. meant we would have had to put the bikes in a truck, drive right, for yeah, some, two yeah. days. Right. It's a long trip. Two it basically months. would be yeah. a week plus trip, so I couldn't take that kind of vacation. So instead, we settled on about four days right. Went to with one day as a cushion. Uh, and we had no real destination except that we wanted to dip a bottle of Maker's Mark in wax. Neither of us really like Maker's Mark. It, but, but it was like something to do, right? We yeah. needed a place or a destination. That that happened to be a good... Plus, we never really spent that much time in Kentucky, right? We both been to Kentucky. Yeah. So we both travel a lot, but we're really Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, yeah. Alabama Virginia, for Maine, our actual yeah. jobs. But not and like then, the mid, yeah. mid area. I've so. driven through Kentucky. I've flown into Kentucky. Right. I've never spent time never in really Kentucky. never really explored. So to, to get the bikes ready... I mean, you see, we, we got saddlebags, and he could put a link to where, whichever ones he went. He went the, the new route. I went off Facebook Marketplace, found some used ones. Uh, I think I paid 40 bucks. You paid 90 bucks. -ish. Yeah. Neither of them are the nicest saddlebags in the world, but they serve a purpose of yep. allowing us to hold stuff. So Dan basically held a lot of tools, different stuff like that. I held all the clothes because we knew that or thought that mine were more waterproof. Right. They seem to be newer, and they have the fold over on the top. Um, however, when we put both of them on, we realized they were going to touch the exhaust, so we did the redneck engineering. That is a... <laughs> I forgot about the wrench. Yeah, the wrench out there. So this is... Uh, from the trip, they were starting to burn, so we actually had to add the wrench too, but that's a roofing square right there. There you go. Yeah, so that is generally a roofing square that we cut and mounted and used the existing bolts on the bike, and then one that's a little longer to keep it off of the exhaust, to keep it from melting, because... 
which they actually mine did. So yeah, they did. yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll get to that. Uh, for for pre trip, I mean, I actually I listen to him. The the stock grips save long trips. They they are not comfortable. They actually I don't know. They put They're weird hard rubber. pressure. Yeah, the hard rubber. They put weird pressure and and, and specific points. So I did the pro taper grips. He got me some uh, some levers for my birthday, which I will say they are a hell of a lot better than stock ones. A lot more uh, meaty feeling, a little bit more. Um, yeah, they're just thicker, more solid. The yeah. stock ones seem, it almost seems, I mean, these aren't super solid, but the stock ones, it felt like they shook around. Like yeah, they just they definitely like they were going to fall off. It felt like if you grabbed it, it would snap in half. So these these were good. So pre-trip, we uh, I swapped all that on mine. Again, my, the only thing I changed on my bike was uh, we pulled the side off and put the sprocket on. We tied in the chains. So we both went to 14.2 sprockets. Yeah. Again, that was just to really lower RPM because we knew that we were going to be going 300 plus miles in a day. Right. We we lower the RPM. RPM in a hot summer. We thought maybe it's better for the engine. Yep. Uh, let's change see. the oil. Change the oil. We didn't change the actual oil filters because they were both good. And I mean, I'll probably medicine. change it on my next one. Right. Probably yeah. on the next one after this trip, I'm going to change mine. But last we checked them, no. We no, carried an extra with us. Yeah, we carried an extra with us just in we case. We carried oil with us. We checked our spark plugs. Everything looked good on the spark plugs. Uh, uh, spokes, so you can go around and hit every spoke and make sure it, it tings. Yeah, it's got a. Or you can actually get a spoke torque wrench, but really, you just don't want loose spokes. You're going to end up damaging the tube or the wheel just, I mean, you can see some catastrophic failures on yeah. the internet of people that yeah, didn't take care of their spokes. Don't want that to happen, so we, we checked um, all that. Uh, tire pressure at the same time, pressure, right? Yeah. Obviously our tires are good, uh, that we're under, at the time we started, we were both under 2,000 miles. Yep. Um, spark plugs, he said, uh, checked all our adjustments. Really, these aren't as bad as the non-counterbalanced engines, the CG230s and the Hawk and the TBR7, but we still check bolts. So just yep. in general, we, torque down our rear axle after tensioning our chain. Front axle. We cleaned the chains really well and lubed them. And we took an extra chain with us. Yeah. I ordered a chain, it sits in my bag now. I'll always have that so we can replace it. It's it's a stupid thing to keep you from getting home if you can just have an extra chain because right. it's easier to replace. It was a cheap, cheap buy. Right? Yeah, 20, 20 something dollars, you can have a chain, leave it in your bag and a chain breaker tool, 10, 12 bucks right. and you're good. So um, I'll put all that, that on the website. Let's see, I had, before we before we left, I had an issue, my, my fork seal was actually Ooh. leaking. I thought the seal had went bad. Uh, doing some research on YouTube, which you gotta love YouTube. There is a little tool that you can get that goes in and it? cleans around the bottom of the seal. That's a little plastic thing. It, it's, it's honestly, a We're genius guy that made it. Uh, he sells it for eight bucks for a piece of plastic and it's crazy. But anyway, you run that around the bottom of the seal and it cleans all the dirt and gunk out of it and then you pump your... Sealmate. Sealmate. So, there it. you go. Yeah. Eight Boom. bucks we can put it. Yeah. Picture of the sealmate. Um, I mean, it, believe it or not, it, it fixed the problem. Didn't need a new seal and no leaks. Pump, uh, you pump your forks to, to reset everything. Uh, we brought, I bought fork seal oil just in case, right? Fork um, yeah, fork oil. That's another thing we took with us. We took yep. engine oil, fork oil, uh, chain lube. Chain lube. Yeah, we didn't mess around. We figured okay. if anything goes wrong, we want to be able to at least get the bikes, you know, rolling to the place we need to go to. Uh, uh, extra spark plug. Yeah, we had an extra spark plug. We had a chain. I mean, other than that, I mean. <laughs> we had an extra lever. Because we went to aftermarket levers, a cool thing is you keep your stock levers, and now when you fall and break them, you can get home, which which it actually happened to us. Like previous, <laughs> his, uh, his son cut me off on an ATV and the Boy. bike. Yeah, there it is. There's uh, Dan breaking his uh, stuff and went down. But you know what? That was the day, the first day I wore the motorcycle pants. So I normally Ooh. don't wear gear, so we can we can link to that. But we uh, yeah, we actually, I'm actually. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a page of our gear. So we'll go right. top to bottom, or bottom to top, right? Yeah. Oh, we got a kid coming in. Who is it? We're dashing steak and shake. <laughs> we're we're dashing steak and shake. Nice. Uh, Good to know. We're dash steak and shake. No. Come on, me. Steak and shake. Yeah, we're going to do it. Steak and shake. Yeah, we're going to do it. Yeah. Okay, bottom to top are outfits. Oh, did we bring the... We talked about it. We didn't bring the helmet. We didn't bring it. Okay, well, I'll show pictures. Boom. Right. So here's a picture of us. Completely dressed up, right. right? So bottom to top, we both wear motorcycle pants on a long ride or on trail rides because right. I mean, this is going to shake around, make noise. We both wear motorcycle pants because uh, they mine are ventilated. I don't have a problem wearing yeah. them. In the mine end. said they were ventilated, <laughs> not ventilated. They suck and they're black, so they just super hot. And, and it's like wearing an oven, yeah. but completely waterproof. So, so I'll, cool. I'll put a link to mine. Yeah, put a link to yours. <laughs> they uh, also come with liners. Obviously, you take them out in the summer. I don't know if I have liners. But anyway, you got oh, to have I didn't start at the bottom. You should wear good supportive boots. 
So my boys are equal. They were steel toe. The number one injury on dual sport motorcycles and motorcycles in general is an ankle injury. And yeah. Dan wears ones that pop around. Yes. Yeah. They but don't you know what? I don't want to spend three hundred dollars for boots. So I spent thirty. Okay. Walmart. Go to Walmart. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, Teresa run, right? So didn't spend uh, any money. Boots, pants. Pants. Um, whatever you want under that. I wear okay. gym shorts and a tank top right. because at any given time we can whip the jacket off, I can cool down, it's kind of nice. Um, we both wear, actually all of our group really wears motorcycle jackets regardless, whether wearing jeans or something on a short yeah, well, ride. Got the jacket on. Motorcycle jackets because when you fall, the first things that are going to hit are going to be your elbows, your back, your stuff like that. And you got to protect your spine, you right. got to protect your elbows. We got the gloves. We got gloves, so got gloves with got the armor. knuckles and everything else. This is going to be the first thing to hit the ground, people. Long trips, those actually, uh, they start to hurt because... Yeah, I had more comfy gloves. Yeah, it's plastic. So. But mine are not protective, so right. it's a give and take, right? right. Um, other than that, we wear... We actually got new helmets for this trip. We did because we wanted the full front flip up. So which picture? Yep, yeah, those those were that was a good buy. That was what ninety bucks. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely worth it. Uh, having a comfortable helmet for a long day like yeah. that made a difference. And, and we didn't actually need the dual sport helmet. So our old dual sport helmets have the visor up top and they're a little wider off the face. The reality is, is when you're doing three hundred miles on road, you don't need all this. Yeah, that's just that's, buffeting. That's for often it's like the a little halo helmet. Yeah, it does. Right. I was meant to Oh, hey, okay, we do have this. Yeah, so, we got that in there. So this is one of our buddy's helmets, Maverick. Um, we also run headsets. So we run one of the cheapest headsets you can get. I believe I paid forty dollars. So we're on the. This is the yeah. EJ EAS. This one is not the one I run. This is a V6. We're on V4 Pros. V4 Pros, yeah. That allows us both to talk to each other, and we've done a ride with up to I think four people. Yep, we did four. They were all connected. Yep. Yep, four yeah, all connected. Four. Now. We learned another trick on this trip. I can sync my phone to his headset and my headset, and we can jam to the same music while talking to each other, as it's long as we're within Bluetooth distance. Yeah. So we'd be going down the interstate just jamming yeah. to some music at the same time. Um, again, $40. If you're going off in the woods, these are pretty much priceless. So yeah. just telling somebody about a hole on the right, go left, there's yeah. mud here. Things somebody like goes that. down, you know, they can, you, know, you might not see them behind you, now you can at least talk to somebody. Yeah. Um, that was a, a very good investment. The saddlebags were a good investment for the trip. They worked. Uh, I mean, we had some issues as far as... Uh, oh, yeah. Like you're supposed to keep it two inches away from your exhaust. So we, we did the whole T-square <laughs> thing to keep it away, but it wasn't two inches. And look, I, I don't think these bikes were designed necessarily to have saddlebags on them. Nope. Because the way the airflow goes, it actually cools off the exhaust. So now we block that, and they ba it basically turned into an oven. And, yep. uh, yeah, so... We'll yeah, this, this whole area right here was probably 20 degrees hotter than it normally was. Super hot. Um, his started to push against the exhaust. So, yeah. Yeah, we added a wrench. <laughs> Put a wrench. I know. It actually, it works, man. Yeah, jerry rigging, right? It, it, it worked. Um, on mine, it was a little worse. I actually burned a hole through the padding and then heated up the actual saddlebag enough to melt plastic to yep. a pair of shorts yep. inside of my saddlebag. Your shorts will forever be marked from this so, trip. So, here is short clip of my actual saddlebags with the tin foil right uh alumina, Which, alumina foil you know trays what? you got to be able to think on the fly and we were at a restaurant eating lunch and you know we, we saw that going in so maybe we can't keep riding like this going you know your, your clothes are going to catch on fire so we yep. uh think of ways and we got the buffet tray little aluminum buffet trays Find them out, stuck them in there, and it, you know what? It worked the rest of the yeah, trip. Yeah, put one around the actual exhaust bracket, and then another in between the padding and the saddle bag. And, and still it, got hot as hell, but it dissipated all the heat though before it got it, to the bag. Yeah. So that was the key there. So that worked. All right, so let's talk about the trip then. So we started day one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to make a video of it. Oh hi. Without a kid, take the dog too while you're at it. See if Ruby will go to mommy's room. Mm. See if Ruby will go to mommy's room and then I'll talk to you about food after. Okay, so. Um, hi. I'm just gonna take, <laughs> take two million. Okay, so the GoPro was overheating in the shed and was also overheating on the back porch. So, back to the trip. So, four days, 852 miles. Uh, day one, we left from Buford, Georgia at about 10, 930, 9 30, 10 in the morning. Yeah. Um, that was a 314 mile day where we ended at Cumberland Falls State Park Resort. But along the way, 
we hit uh, Dragon's Tail, which I gotta say, I was a little worried with the bikes on how they would do, whipping it through uh, switchbacks and twisty curtain. I felt like we did really well. I, I was gonna say, man, we got some pictures of- Video? I mean, it was, it was a little- We passed the guy? We passed it, we did, we passed the guy. Uh, a motorcycle, I should say. Yeah, Not we passed a motorcycle. I thought he was gonna die, that was crazy, but- uh, We didn't cross double yellows, plenty of other motorcycles did. Lots of people were in our lane. Uh, we dragged pegs, which, wasn't expecting that to happen, but a little scary. That was a little sketch. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they, they handled. I don't want to say flawlessly, but I mean, pretty good enough. Good enough. Uh, very, Especially with saddlebags. Yeah, considering with the saddlebags, extra weight, and not. I mean, two fifties. You know what I mean? Like we did hard people with a thousand cc's more than us. Uh, and we, we got stuck behind a gold wing. Yeah, we got stuck behind a gold wing going very slow. But Dragon's Tail, we slayed it. I mean, it, it went really well. Slayed the dragon. We slayed the dragon. Um, and then did we? we the waypoints he picked on the way up, uh, like we were saying, like graveyards and churches, we found all these cool twisty curves. I mean, it was just a great way to see um, the country. The country that yeah. you just normally wouldn't see going down there. Yeah, we were literally right? on some of these mountain roads and side roads going, we, this place would have never existed yeah. to us had we road right. tripped here because we would have been on the interstate, blasting by at 90 right. miles an hour and never seen it. We would have got there in like two hours instead of the eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know what? Day one was actually right. 10 hours yeah. total. That was a lot riding, day. including lunch and dinner. We stopped. We just picked barbecue places yeah. everywhere throughout the We ate a lot of barbecue. We did. It was really good. <laughs> but it was good, dude. I had an awesome cheeseburger. Well, it was with protein and fat. Like you don't yeah. want a bunch of fried food. You don't want. I mean, we did have fried we food, but you don't want like food. nothing but yeah. fried food. You don't want. Uh, I'll recommend too the shed. much food. We'll, we'll we'll put their note in. The shed was good, man. That was, that yeah, the shed good. was actually the closest the to was, us. That was only sixty-five miles. Yeah, that was, I had a, a burger with pimento cheese and cowboy relish or something. Dude, money. It was it was Reuben. Good. The Reuben. Yeah, the Reuben. Reuben. Oh, wait. Yeah, there. There's our meals. <laughs> um, I gotta remember to do all those, or we're gonna look real stupid. Yeah, just stupid folding just our hands this, up. Right. <laughs> uh, the, the Cumberland Falls, where we ended up, it was this beautiful lodge uh, up in a ridge and off the balcony of this place. It was like an old, almost, I don't want to say castle, but we'll, we'll post some photos of it. It, it, it was old. Let's, let's be yeah, real. It was definitely old. It looks beautiful. looks beautiful. It Not so nice inside. Yeah. like it looks. Yep. A little, little mildewy. <laughs> it was a musty. It was, I mean, it was probably a 1970s lodge. And they had an updated, but you know what? For what it was and where we were, it was beautiful. I mean, the scenery was... And awesome. I want to say it was 130 bucks. Yeah. It was nothing. I would recommend if you got a family, go there. Maybe not stay there. They have some cabins and stuff that might be better. Yeah, there's cottages and stuff um, on property too. The, they had breakfast. Breakfast was, you know, your standard okay. or whatever. Yeah. Um, but the mountain roads getting there, <laughs> that was the best part. It was that actually, was, so that was Copperhead Trail. Copperhead Trail, which we didn't even realize we were on, but we were on. Yeah. So, the so there's Dragon's Tail, this one. This is just another mountain road that they call Copperhead Trail and you follow a few turns. We literally were on it on our way to this place without ever yeah. even knowing it was there. And it was, I mean, awesome. I mean, yeah. again, we can, you can look at the videos and watch it. They're, they're, you know, they're a little long, so just put it on the background and don't watch it. Yeah. That, that so was, that was 314 mile day, boom, video, yeah. day one, there right. you go. Day two? Day two, uh, where did we end up? We went from the waterfalls, we checked that out in the morning, and then yep. we, we packed up and we hit... Uh, back roads. We actually roads. went away from yep. where we wanted to go. Because we wanted to hit more of that Copperhead Trail thing. She mentioned something about a bearded dragon. No, or Rattlehead. Or... Rattle, rattle snake. Rattle snake or something. something. Rattle snake There's ridge. other trails, yep. which are just curvy roads that motorcycle yep. guys ride. So I don't know if I don't think we ended up finding that, but we found a bunch of awesome other side roads. But my, uh, I'm, I'm I'm not gonna lie, the KPX awesome bike performed flawlessly, but the seat is not designed for <laughs> skinny people. Well, this is so after we went off off on power lines. Yeah, right. Did we, we did go off road? Yeah, that was that day. Was that that second day? Yeah. So okay, the second so we day we went on power line that's roads. Right. Um, we found some random dude walking on power lines. That was weird. Just act like you belong. Anytime you're off road, just be like, "What's up, man? Yeah, How's hey, it going?" I was like, "Hey, is this trail good over here?" Yeah. He's like, "Yeah, just go ahead." Yeah. So that was, uh, that was interesting. I about, I don't know if you have it, you probably don't have it on video, but I got stuck in a rut and the bike slid no, down, down and the, the bike was still going. I mean, that, that was good, but the bike didn't, just kept going, so. Uh, yeah, the bike has more potential than we do. Yep, so that that, <laughs> that worked, but we ended up, uh, was it that day or the next day I had to buy the seat cushion? It was that day. So it was that day. Because we did 136 miles that day. Yeah. So we we're about 30 miles into this trip. Right. And you were probably still sore from the day before, which was 314 My miles. My tailbone was killing me. And we pulled over at the Dollar General. <laughs> and we were looking for pillows. I'm like, you have any pillows? And uh, ended up picking a on sale. It was half price. It was five dollars <laughs> an outdoor seat cushion. Looks like a grandma cushion. I mean, uh -huh. nothing against grandmas and their their taste, but you know. Oh, here's Dan in his seat. My nice cushion. <laughs> uh, and 
a little awkward sitting, it makes you sit a little bit higher and it kind of slides around, but I will say it saved the tailbone. So my, my recommendation, if you're gonna be riding these a lot, or long distances and... Just get a gel seat cover. Get a gel seat. You know what someone mentioned that I hadn't thought about was uh, yeah. bicycle pants. Because bicycle pants yeah, have the padding there, so that, that might be an option. Or just put memory foam or a gel pad on top of your... Or just uh, don't be skinny. Seat. Yeah. Or, I don't know how <laughs> you... Ben doesn't have a butt. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Mine wasn't, my though. experience wasn't as bad. I mean, nothing's comfortable. Yours is hurting though. Nothing's comfortable for 300 miles, right? Yeah. Sitting still, I could be in the most comfortable chair That's ever, true. but you're not going to be. Yeah, no, it, was, uh, it was. uh Yeah, it was. It was a little. The seat cushion saved it. I was able to continue on. <laughs> so I don't was, know if I've been able to without that. Seat that was mostly a boring day of riding, though, because yeah. that was really just to get from Cumberland Cumberland Falls up to yep. Campbellsville, Kentucky, Campbellsville, where Kentucky. we were actually going to stay for two nights. Right. Be, well, it was fun. close enough to yeah. where we were going, and uh, yeah. so the second day we just kind of putzed around. Third day. What did we do the third day? Third day was Campbellsville, and we went to the uh, Hole in the Rock Wall. Really yeah, cool photo. Really cool. Not a cool track. Literally a, no, 100 just, feet off the side of the road. It's I think they're cool probably actually going to blast it away because it looked like they were doing yeah. a road or something there. So it's probably going to But if you want a cool photo, that's yeah, a cool so, spot. Um, cool then we the went on another power line trail. Yeah, we just dead didn't ended go and I almost ran into the river. There's, there's the edge <laughs> that was right there. Funny. That's like, here we go. Don't go. Yep, so don't do that. And then we went to a cool little town. Greensburg. Greensburg, Kentucky, which was historic, uh, has mm -hmm. the oldest oldest operating courthouse mm -hmm. in Kentucky, which was 1802 or something. And we met a we met a cool guy that owns, I'd say, maybe a third of that city, mm -hmm. Mr. Um, Landrum. I forget his first yes. name. William Bill. Landrum. Bill. Yeah, William or Bill Landrum, uh, Colonel. I think he was a colonel. He was a colonel in the military. He has a bunch of cool stories. He's running the old tavern inn and the museum. Museum, and there's like a coffee Greensburg. bar or something there. Dude, yep. nicest guy. Uh, the food. We, we went back, we ate dinner there. Dinner was awesome, super great dude. Um, that was one of those, we walked in thinking nothing of it and we spent right. 45 minutes and this yeah. dude gave us a tour of the museum that wasn't open. That you normally have to pay and he gave us kind yeah. of a private tour and gave us his super own story awesome. about serving in Kuwait and you know, it, basically a service to the country, which, you know, thank you for your service, you, you. Uh, it was pretty cool. It's, it's cool people experience. like you that made this trip. I mean, that, that to me was probably the highlight of the trip. I know we're talking about bikes, but that truly was like, I don't know. Yeah, Bill Landon. Yeah, yeah, that was that was fantastic. Yeah, he was just a, a like. It, you find these little cities, and people don't think anything of them because you know. Again, you yeah. blast by them on the interstate. Right. Why is one, the city here? It's literally a one red light right. town. I don't even yeah. know. Did it have a red light? I don't even think it had a red light. Yeah, no, definitely didn't have a Kmart. <laughs> Nothing. I no think it had one dollar general. That was it. Mm. So yeah, there's places like that that really actually have a lot of history. Uh, Andrew Jackson stayed at the inn there. Yeah, stayed at the inn. Um, the Union actually took over the courthouse area as a, a outpost crazy. in the war, like all kind of crazy yeah. stuff. And nah. a lot of these buildings are still there. Yeah, still there. And the in fact, the old tavern inn that Bill runs was a hardware store it in was, the early yeah, 1900s and late 1800s. Three stories he said. So that was just neat history. Yeah. Not a place that you would go if you weren't looking for it, but if you're around there, go go check out Greensburg and try his restaurant right. and his coffee. And that was just the morning of the third right. day. That was morning. So yeah. then we raced back to the hotel. Yep. Um, by the way, on this whole trip, Grandma followed in a Hyundai Sonata. So Grandma's waiting for us at the hotel. We jump in the Hyundai, drive up to Maker's Mark, because we were uh, signed up to do a tour at noon. Yeah. So we, we went made on that four tour. To spare. Yeah. Yeah, we made it just in yeah. time. Um, went on the tour, Maker's Mark, amazing tour. Actually, yeah. uh, they're one of the older private distilleries. I think it's one of the oldest, right? Yeah, so they're not they're not publicly owned or anything like that. They're still private. They still yeah. do stuff the way they did it like right. 80 years ago. Yeah. Still they still have the original label cutting machine. Yeah, the, the original, I mean, yeah. if you got the time and you're ever doing the bourbon tour, I would highly recommend Maker's Mark. The, the tour itself was very interesting. But you have to sign up ahead of time. Yeah, so that is one of the things with any of these distilleries is up in Kentucky is plan your trip like months out. And yeah. Do do all your tours. Because they're cooked up. Yeah. Believe it or not, like, I guess bourbon's like a thing, right? Because a lot of the places we tried to go, you couldn't, you couldn't even get in. So yep. Maker's Mark, and then we went back and we went back to Greensburg for dinner. And Great like dinner. Said, great dinner. Yep. The dude had his like, meatloaf or something, so that was fantastic. Then we went to downtown Campbellsville, Kentucky. Which, let me tell you, <laughs> who would have thought that downtown Campbellsville, Kentucky would be happening? Because it wasn't happening the previous night. We went out and there was like nobody out. It was crazy. The next night, it was uh, a cruise night. It was like Panama City Beach, man. Like all these cars going back and forth, revving their engines. Boom. Yeah. Did so you have a video, video of that? I have oh, a video. Nice. Yeah. yeah. It would, you know, I don't want to, but yeah, uh, country folk. 
Campbellsville people were out the... Uh, so apparently they do cruise nights. Yeah, they do cruise nights. Where the, everybody who has a nice or cool or interesting vehicle just yeah. cruises. They, they were literally doing circles. Yeah, doing circles. We saw the same vehicles yeah. multiple times. Four or five times. Um, kind of a cool city, the uh, yeah. Bourbon Boutique we went to. Nobody in there, and I don't know why. I don't know. Dude, it was cheap as hell. If, we got two drinks for like seven bucks. If that was here in Beaufort, Georgia, that place would be packed yeah. from wall to wall. Yeah. And people would do bourbon tastings and all yep. kind of stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> the, that, that, first that night, the first night. I said, do you do like a bourbon flight or a tasting or anything? She said, oh yeah, but I don't know how to do that. Know, so you have to come back on somebody. Saturday. <laughs> you gotta call somebody. We're like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just give us a drink. Yeah. But yeah, you got a canned beer and I got, I think, an on-draft cider. And it was six ninety nine. I don't yeah. think I've ever it's been really somewhere nice. and had two drinks for six ninety nine. It was dirt cheap. Everything in Kentucky was cheap. Honestly, if you want to do a road trip, try yeah, Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah. But there's nothing. I thought, I don't know what I was thinking. I thought Kentucky was going to be like completely different. It's just like here. But Kentucky. It looks a little different. They have more rock formations. They do have. Right? We didn't yeah. see a lot of that. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, yeah, but no, it's it's back. It's it's farming country, country yeah. and stuff. Oh, and we, dude, you got to post a video. We were somewhere. We stopped somewhere, and there was these drones fertilizing. So instead of the crop dusters that would go in and you know spray yep. pesticides on the fields, there was drones going out and doing. The video it. sucks. I won't post it, but you can look uh, it up. Drone drone pesticides. Uh, I sent you a video of the okay. actual people doing it. I didn't, I didn't actually The one it. I saw, there's a 16 year old. He just sits there all day. And probably GPS gets paid. mapped and everything. Yes. He probably gets paid to do that. That's an ingenious job. Anyway, so that was cool. Uh, so, then, so then we went back and rested because we yep. had a. We had, at this point, we had an option of staying Saturday night if we didn't want to cannonball all the way home. I think both of us wanted to be home by then. But we just started our day. Yep. And we cannonballed 370 miles. And before before we left that night, we parked oh, the yeah, bike. Sorry, yeah, we did we, prep the bike. We just wanted we wanted to triple check everything, right? So we checked the oil. I was a little bit low. Don't know what happened there, but we, we added about a half quart of oil yep. to mine. Um, tire pressure was good. Tire pressure was good. We had to tighten one of the uh, one spokes. spokes. Yeah, because yeah, it was off a little bit. It had a little thud. Um, but other than that, everything was still good. Bolts were still tight. Oh no, we tightened our chains. Our chains loosened. Yeah, our chains had definitely loosened up because yeah. we'd done 500 miles since yep. that previous one. <clears throat> we tightened the chains, and that was it. Yeah, this was at mile 482 of this trip. Right. We finally did some sort of maintenance and check. Well, I guess we should talk about, I mean, gas mileage. We're still probably averaging 60 miles to the gallon. Yeah, so, I mean, were. I think we were going 80 miles and we were putting like a gallon, maybe 1.2 gallons or something like that. Yeah. So we, we tried to plan our trip where we would hit. Every 100 miles. Yeah, every 100 miles we were stopping. And it was a good break too, because you weren't sitting on the bike. Your, your butt could come <laughs> unnumbed for a little while. Yeah, that was, I was, I was ready to get off. So the last day, so we checked all that that evening, we got up the next morning and uh, we hit the road, man. That was, that was, so honestly, there's not a lot to say about the last day, except there was 370 miles. Twisty curvies. There were some twisties in there. Yeah. We did hit Blood Mountain. We hit Blood which Mountain. Which is Georgia's yep. Dragon's Tail. Which I'll say, trying to do it on a pillow on top of a seat. A little weird. So at minimum. mile 300 for the day. <laughs> yeah. You've yeah. already driven yeah. 300 you're miles, you're on a Chinese dual sport right. on a pillow, and you're trying to do Blood Mountain. That and was, uh, yeah, it was different. We were cruising, and man, what, what was it like? At the end of the day, and man, we had three people, probably leader bikes, I mean, big yeah. boys. They were riding our ass and said, all right, so man, go on by us, and they just got stuck. Yeah. They didn't go anywhere, so it was like they really didn't gain anything, but you know, it just goes to show, like, look, we don't have the biggest bikes, we weren't the fastest. We, we did all the same stuff, though. We did all the same stuff, and I think, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I will say this bike. Would it be nice to have more? Yes. Right. Oh, which brings me to my next point is we're totally buying Lafon's KPT 400 as soon as it comes out. As soon as it comes out, it's available. Yeah. Well, if you want them, we, we want it, right? I've already we, talked to him. We're working on getting the first we're working ones, on, right? So we want to go down. We want to test these things because not only are they fuel injected, they're six speed. They're 400 cc's, so double, triple the horsepower. They're adventure built with three hard saddlebags yep. already, three travel cases. So they have the canister, so you don't even have to add the saddlebags like we did. So, so we'll go from that. doing this to doing like the Trans American Trail. Right. Dude, yeah, that's, that's when we'll actually make the trip to Maine and we'll go over to Canada. We'll, we'll go all sorts of places. But so I do want a bigger bike. I do want a bigger bike. I do want a bigger bike after this trip, but I, I, to, to, I best go back to what I was saying. For what this bike is, you can't worked, well, you can't beat for three thousand bucks, man. You can't get a new bike that cheap. Yeah, so I was looking out there. Honda's XR 150 is basically the competition, right? It's so like six almost grand, the right? same speed, huh? Six grand? Uh, I think it's it's, it's less. Okay, it's, it's closer, but I mean ours is cheaper, right? And what I always see is people say, well, yeah, Honda says it's you know whatever MSRP. 
add a thousand to that because you're not leaving the dealership without paying a thousand more. Taxes that. and all that. Well, um, and and there's other things in there that dealerships. Yeah. Whereas these bikes, you tend to get them for the price. Right. Plus, literally the tax tag and title, nothing yeah. else. There's no dealer prep exactly. and coding and stuff like that. It was like, like twenty nine hundred dollars, and then it was like two hundred bucks in taxes or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and, and you were us. complaining. I was complaining. Because <laughs> right? I wanted a sub three thousand dollar bike, <laughs> and I was I was a little irritated about that because there was a whole thing we talked about. I don't know. Set your expectations, right? I don't like my expectations to change from what they were. So, it is a three thousand dollar ish bike. Bike. <laughs> if we'd said that to begin with, I would have known what I was going into. Yeah. I thought it was a sub three, but anyway, for thirty one hundred bucks. Now I don't regret my decision. It's it's been it's been a yeah. so if you're gonna do stuff like we're doing, right. this is probably the bike. If you are only gonna do around town, I'd still be on the TBR. I still do. You know, I don't know. Yeah, for the money, for the money, dude. TBR, fourteen hundred dollars. Fourteen hundred bucks. Now they, I think they've gone up a little bit now. Six or sixteen hundred now, yeah. but still for sixteen hundred bucks. Now did they add shipping too? So maybe they've got. I don't know. Either way, the TBR that was an awesome bike. And dude, if you kill a fourteen hundred, sixteen hundred dollar bike, who gives? Crap, right? You just that's, you throw that's, it away that's been our, our thing since the beginning of this. Is that that ma if that bike flies off the side of the mountain, I'm gonna Let jump go. on the back of Dan's bike. Right. And we're gonna go. TBR. We're gonna go, right? And I'm not I'm not gonna lose any sleep over yeah, that. Yeah, we'll say the TBR7. I put someone on the back of that. That was a little sketch. Someone on the back of the KPX. You could ride two up on it. Yeah. I don't know. I, have, I ride with the kids all the time. Yeah, with the kids. But I don't. Would you put like if you and me got on the bike or you no. and your wife? I don't know if I'd do that. I don't, I don't no, think it's not fun for that. That's again where you need the 400. You need a little bit more. A little bit more power, but. I'd say if I were to give the KPX a rating as far as performance, I'd probably give it a nine and a half out of ten. Maybe or nine. a two hundred and fifty cc. For two hundred fifty cc, so yeah, let's go through a rating system. So let's give on performance. I'd say a nine out of ten. It does have a weird false neutral, which it happened to me twice. And we we're going. And That's probably my number one complaint from the whole trip. Yeah, the fifth to six, and it would just drop out of gear. But it was like you would stick it in six, but it wasn't in six, and it would drop out. But it only happened twice. It's because we're wimpy kicking between gears. Apparently, so the only way to fix it is to it. kick out of the gear and then shove yeah, it back in, back in, and then it clicks in better, and you're good. So I would say that was my my only complaint. But it's, other than that, that I'm gonna bring that down a point for that. I'd still give it a nine out of ten. I'm like eight and a half. I think for 250 cc's. It what could it be was. a little more power, horsepower wise. Yeah. But it's enough. And that's what oh, makes it good. Just, dude, one button starts goes. Oh, that's the right? ease of use. Is yeah, easy. So, so maybe easy use, 10 out of 10? Yeah. That's straight out of the box. Comfort. You can literally do nothing. Comfort is, Comfort is like. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know though. Around town. Around town, it's not bad. So it's like, like a seven. Seven, seven and a half, right? Uh, performance, I mean, what else could you rate it on? Price. Price. So, is a is a seven. I, I honestly think this could be a. Could you go get a Kawasaki KLR or whatever similar 250 used, but you're going to get it 10 years older, and you could get it for a similar price. But it's 10, 10 years, years older. older. So I, I subscribe to the the concept of I will buy a known set of issues right. as opposed to buying a mystery. And a used bike is always a mystery for me because I don't know what that previous I mean, person that did. It could run good for a minute yeah. and overheat after 10 miles, right? Yeah. I mean, that's but good. a new bike, these, I'm not saying these you don't have issues, but they have a known set of issues, You would, right? You would I know it. it needs grips. I know it could, if it's a TBR7, I know I'm putting a sprocket and a carburetor on it, right? Like I know the things I need to do. Right. And if it doesn't, if it does have something else, it's probably warranty. I would hope so. Yeah, well, like the starter, right? Like the starter yeah. was not a note, but they fixed that. But if that were a used bike, and the we starter goes three weeks later, yeah. you're, yeah, you're buying a starter. So, well. so that's why I'm saying I have a known set of issues. I like the newer bike from a lesser name, and I really like driving slow bikes fast. That's, I guess that's right. <laughs> right. Even, dude, I would ball, I mean, flat out, just pegged out. You rip through every gear. Rip through every gear, which is fun, right? It's, yeah. it's fun to rip through the gears. Now, that's why I said I don't like this rocket because you can't rip, it's not as sporty feeling. It's a little bit more, look, you, you, have, to, you have to play in your, your gear shifts. You got to play in your gear shifts. But regardless, it's it's fun to rip through the gears and even flat out. I mean downhill. I mean, we were we were tucked in. I don't know if you got a video of that, but we were we were tucked in flat on the bike. We did full tuck races, right. uphills, and uphills stuff. and stuff. And I mean maybe 70, 75 mile an hour. But you know with saddlebags, with saddlebags. And, and for some reason, you kept going faster. Man, I don't know why. That was irritating because my bike used to be faster. But uh, I'll say that it was. Bike still, I mean, dude, 70, 70 miles. What are, you, what are you gonna do if I fall off at 70 miles an hour? Yeah, I might break a couple of things, but I'm I would like to hope I'm not gonna die, yeah. right? So but there's there's a, also the bikes served the purpose, right? So even if we were on a Honda or a Yamaha, right, trick or something, you know, something yeah. in that class, that 
the trip wouldn't have been any different. No. That's for me, right? Like, yeah. I, honestly, the bikes didn't break. There was nothing that we had right. to do because they were cheaper I bikes. don't think you can knock it because it was a cheap Chinese bike. No. And you know what? We got a bunch of compliments on this trip about how good these bikes look. Yeah. And the only thing we've done cosmetically is right. pressure washed off our decals. Which I'll say. <laughs> All the decals came off. So we made our own decals, which there'll be some pictures of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can see that, which he's got a little uh, cricket thing. You can print them off. But yeah, man, I, I got to give props to, I guess, touching base on the phone. They're, they're the second largest manufacturer in China for engines and power sports. Yeah, so one of the biggest the exports are, they do the Predator engines. You know who they actually own? I don't know if you know this or not. Lotus and Volvo. Which who would have thought, right? So our our bike... They're basically sports cars. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we, we, got the, we don't have the Volvo because we don't have all the safety features, but you know, maybe it's the true. KPT 400 will be the Volvo. That's true. Yeah, right? the KPT 400. Ooh, KPT 400. Boom. Right. That sucker is going to have crash bars, it's saddle ugly. bags. It is so ugly. Oh, it, it reminds me of the Har Harley Davidson Pan America. Pan America, yes. Right. It reminds me of like Robocop or something. Which, again, Harley Davidson Pan America. Uh, $20,000? Yeah, let's, let's say there's the MSRP right. as of today. And Look, then, boom, here's the MSRP. My next door neighbor KPT just bought the Triumph Adventure bike, and it was a $28,000 bike, brand new. And insane. he paid, I think he said he got it for like nineteen. And don't get me wrong, it's got a lot of cool features like ABS and it's got this little like pouch that opens up that's waterproof, but 18 grand? Yeah. Bro, I'm gonna go get a car. Okay. In the bedroom, we're making a video. You wanna say hi? Hi. <laughs> it's one of the wives. One, one of somebody's. Yeah, somebody. somebody. Um, yeah, so I think uh, wrap up on the bike. I was pleasantly surprised with the lack of maintenance needed. We prepped, we brought every tool to break down this bike. And what the only thing we used to do was to tighten the chain. That's really yeah. the only true maintenance was time to spoke mm -hmm. on add the rims. Yeah, add a little oil and... And when we say like quarter quart in yeah. Dan's bike, none in my bike. I don't know why my bike ate so much, but... His we'll burn just, more. I, I, I ride my bike hard. Like if, if it's, if it can be pegged, I peg it out wherever I go, full throttle, all the time. Um, but yeah, nothing else. Chain, that was it. So, I mean, Go get a cheap Chinese bike. Again, Look, if you're if you're doing around town, you don't have to buy. If you got bike. less than two thousand dollars, get the TBR seven. Fantastic bike. That thing was awesome for what it was. If you got three grand to spend and you want to have fun and you want to know that you're going to get something quote unquote quality for 3k yeah and you don't want to spend the extra money for the honda because look dude you go it's going to last longer right. it's going to be less maintenance you don't have to do anything to it out of the box that's what right. you're paying for you're paying right. for the ability to let it sit for a month and walk out there and press that dude, button and just start i will recommend to use ethanol free gas if it's going to sit we ran just regular gas while we were going because we were we were running through the gas so it doesn't matter but if you're going to have it sit definitely run ethanol free because that ethanol just destroys everything yep. so but yeah to wrap it up i mean dude i, I give them if you were giving it five stars, I'd give it four and a half out of five. Now we're stars instead of I don't know, <laughs> rating, whatever, dude. I'm just saying, like overall of what it is, I would, I would two thumbs up. I give it, stars. I give it three stars out of three. Three out of three? Okay, that's pretty good. We're that's just changing the rating. Yeah, I don't know. But I, I would say it, it was, it was. But, anyway, yeah, so then had to get there and then I'm like, I'll get it back. Right. And I had both of them. There's a white claw, or not? Sir. No, I'm going to pick, pick up Mexican. Are you? Yeah, I'm going to go pick up Mexican mm -hmm. for the girls. Mexican? Well, I'm going to go pick it up. I can't do long. I was talking to Dan, not you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, hang I mean, if the girls were here, I, mean, I would go. I'm sure. We go to pick up her. Dan can drive. You can get drop the kids here and we'll go. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. What? Drop, drop the, the girls here and we'll go to Mexican. No, they're, they're tired. They're, they're fine. Come on. We'll tell you all about uh, Chinese motorcycles. It'll be a lot of fun. Totally. You want to know about that. It's only like a 30 minute We can talk about what you want to talk about, Hannah. What do you want to talk about? Nothing really. Hey, you know what? That's a we great conversation. Drink. Yeah, I know, right? We can just eat beer. different salsa. Beer. That's what I want to talk about. Okay. Okay. We'll discuss it. Well, let us know if you want to drop them off. I'm, 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 you can ride in my avalanche. Ooh. Hey, you better. know what? If you ride in the front seat, it'll air condition your tush. Oh, oh that's right. You do have the air conditioning. I have the fancy schmancy one. That. Dude, it, it makes the yeah. everything just so much better. You need to cool down your bits.
The bit? <laughs> Ice cold. You, you can never not go down the bit. I mean, you know? Right. I'm, I, dude, I, I like the cold bits. So it doesn't mean not, you know. I'm right. Dude, I, honestly, I don't think I'll ever buy another vehicle without air conditioned seats. Okay. You're such a okay. spoiled little girl. I am. A, I, when it, I like my balls to be cold. Yeah. That's going at the front of the video. <laughs> <laughs> If you change your mind, <laughs> let us know. All right. Bye, Make it a good day. I will. Okay. All right. Sweet. All right. So, overheated for the fourth time. Jesus. It's really yeah. hot. Yeah, it's uh, I had it in the case. GoPro. Yeah, yeah whatever. Um, yeah, we were at the wrap-up. It's it's great. Do it. Yeah. Good bike. Can't beat it for the price. Oh, what we were saying. If you don't have a ton of money and you just want to get into motorcycling, TBR7, yeah. Templar X250, Hawk 250, um, shoot, there's even a LaFon uh, LaFon makes 200. one, Expect or something right Expect there, right? Expect 200, great bike. Uh, those will get you into the same things comfortably up to 55, 60 miles an hour. Right. You won't probably want to do the trip we just did, but you could do a lot of things similar. Could. And a lot of around town stuff, it's right. a lot of fun. But review, like if we were to put this next to a Honda, a Kawasaki, a Suzuki. The quality think... will always be better on a Japanese bike, we'll wait for it. But a lot of the problems people have with Chinese bikes is due to poor assembly, poor maintenance, right? I mean, dude, if you're expecting a Honda at a Ford Pinto, you know what I mean? Like price, you're paying yeah. price. Like, look, you, you, I think I got. You got exactly what you paid for. I got what I paid for, right? But is it going to be, are the bearings going to be tested the same as a Honda? Probably not. But dude, look at it like this. If LaFon is manufacturing the Predator engine, Right, which is in all these copy. Basically, they took Honda's design, whether they want to admit it or not. Yeah. They took this, put this, put Predator, and dude, the little Harbor Freight generators. All my guys at work run them, and they run just as quiet as a Honda, and we have no issues. We change the oil and put them, and they keep going. So I mean, I. Yep. I'm sold. Yeah. I don't. I don't foresee any major issues. And again, we're gonna probably switch bikes and probably keep at least one of these. In the yeah, process. I'm gonna I'm keep it. And so we'll keep giving you updates if they break. Yeah. Um, I'll keep making videos if we fix anything or do anything. KPX250.com, we're gonna put everything there. Yep. Um, this video will be there along with uh, all the others and all the parts you might need to work on it. Yeah. Um, and then we had a battery die. Um, yeah, wrap up. Done. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think, I think it's done. We've, we've, we've Hit us up with comments, problem. questions, uh, subscribe, like. We don't make any money off of this. We both have full-time jobs and just have this as a hobby. Right. I run the websites as a hobby. I make, only if you buy an Amazon part, I make a very small percentage and it doesn't come out of anybody's pocket but Amazon. So stick it to them and buy through our websites. Right. It's tbr7.com, kpx250.com. My wife drives a magician, so I've got magician250.com too. If you're interested in those bikes, there's her flying through the mud. She's Getting nice. pretty good at this stuff. Nice. Um, yeah. And then yeah. hopefully we get the KP two four hundreds and we'll be able we to probably go ahead and buy that. Man, we need we we, we need to uh yeah. yeah. LaFon, hit us up. Let us know.